So I've been meaning to make a video about why hybrid vehicles are the best vehicle type, but I couldn't not react to this ad, because it will cause confusion. Engineering Explained normally produces very informative and well-structured videos. In fact, I've learned a lot from his channel, and it's a notable portion of why I feel qualified to make this response now. I will link to some of my favorite videos of his at the end and in the description. I have also put a link to the entire script of this video with highlights on the sections containing extra information that I did not read aloud. The first claim is that hybrids cause more wear by starting the engine more frequently. This is an extremely complex topic, but the omission of the word cold in that sentence makes all the difference. An engine needs oil to lubricate most parts of it, and oil always leaves a thin film behind that takes a long time to dissipate. Oil pumps get to operating pressure almost instantly. A warm engine starting doesn't produce significant wear, and newer hybrid vehicles use electric oil pumps to even eliminate the smallest gap of oil pressure during startup. A cold engine has to use more fuel to run. Cylinders always have a thin coat of oil on them, more fuel washes away and dilutes this oil when it is also moving slower due to being cold. All fuel produces carbon dioxide, water vapor, and nitrogen oxides when it burns. When the engine is cold, the nitrogen oxides and water vapor can form nitric acid that condenses on the cold cylinder walls. This eats more of the oil film. This is where most engine wear comes from, and why you should wait at least 15 seconds between starting a cold engine and moving the vehicle. When your vehicle is already warmed up, additional starts cause a minimal amount of additional wear that is more than compensated for by the fuel savings of the engine turning off when not needed. Additionally, saying an engine is off can be misleading. While newer hybrid vehicles do actually stop spinning the engine at times, most of the time when an engine is not running, it is still spinning, which keeps the oil where it needs to be. In fact, non-hybrid vehicles stop running their engines while coasting as well but they are still spinning. It is impossible to prevent water from getting into motor oil in small amounts. The engine itself under normal operation pushes a minute amount of exhaust into the oil, which I remind you that the exhaust has water and acid in it. This is also why oil turns darker. It's from the exhaust. Which, by the way, if you don't go on longer drives once a month, you need to be changing your oil more frequently, or going on at least one longer drive per month. It's a real shame most people aren't told this, but fortunately newer vehicles help you deal with it. Anyhow, the claim here is that hybrids operate with more temperature fluctuation and at lower temperatures overall, and this means more water collects in the oil. I call bullshit on this because I've kept track of the temperature my hybrid runs at, and it stays consistent unless it is below freezing outside. I don't think the vehicles tested to make this claim are representative of hybrid vehicles. Additionally, this portion of the original video ignores the fact that water evaporates below boiling temperatures. While that alone may not always clear all the water out, it certainly helps. While fluctuation of any kind does cause wear, I'm not sold on the temperature fluctuation of hybrids being a bad thing. See, another thing people generally understand is that revving an engine higher wears it out faster. But if your engine never revs high, it will break quicker. It's the same thing if your vehicle sits around disused for weeks at a time. The lack of variation in a system of many moving parts wears out those parts faster than regular variation. Vehicles need to move to stay in good condition. This barely gets a mention, but was a major bullet point in the intro of the video for some reason. This happens to a small degree in all gasoline vehicles, and it's taken care of by the emission system passing vented gases through the engine to burn them to reduce environmental harm. If your vehicle's emission system is broken or you have an actual fuel leak, the fuel in your motor oil is just as bad as having water in it. But otherwise, it isn't a problem. For some reason, the claim is that fuel gets into the oil at an accelerated rate in hybrids for the same reason water gets in at an accelerated rate. Even if this has some truth behind it, it's a small enough degree that it doesn't matter. Hybrids kick in most when moving from a dead stop, going at lower speeds when an engine is less efficient, and during high acceleration to boost the power output and reduce how high the engine needs to rev in order to get enough power. These all lead to the engine being treated more gently, which makes it last longer and use less fuel. Critically, as I stated earlier, an engine needs to be used regularly in order to stay in good condition. Plug-in hybrids have more issues because they don't use their engines enough, so even though they use even less fuel, they are more expensive and have more problems. While more expensive than a gas-only vehicle, hybrids use less materials and have less complexity than plug-in hybrids and electric vehicles. This makes them last longer and have fewer issues. The high initial cost can be a problem, but the fuel savings and maintenance savings over their lifetime more than make up for it. They do have smaller engines and can't go as fast as the most performant gas-only vehicles, but they have instant and high acceleration, and very few people take a vehicle to its maximum speed anyhow. Right now, their batteries also last longer than plug-in hybrids and electric vehicles because the battery usage can always be balanced against an engine. The batteries are never overworked or overutilized like they can be in other vehicle types. However, that does seem to be changing. Both sidesism is generally bad, but I'd be a fool not to speak the truth about the downsides. While electric vehicles are the most expensive to repair, and plug-in hybrids a bit below that, 
Hybrids are still more expensive to repair than gas-only vehicles. You shouldn't need to repair them very often, but if you aren't as good of a driver, it might be worth considering a gas vehicle instead. If you care about Earth staying habitable to human life, then you should also be aware electric vehicles are better over its entire lifetime for the environment. If you really care, don't buy a private vehicle at all. They are one of the most energy inefficient things in existence. Everyone has bills to pay. Mobile One was paying. I'd take the money too if I could. Don't harass people, but do look for more information anytime you're just told to believe something. That includes this video. I am confident in my knowledge, but you don't know me. You don't know that you can trust everything I say. Speaking of money, I'd take that filthy oil money too if I could because I'm in danger of losing my home. My partner has been without work for over a year and only just got a contract job. If you know anything about contract jobs, you know they're fickle, so it doesn't really mean I'm safe. I don't do this for money, but if I don't have money, I die. It's that brutally fucking simple. You might notice the first two videos here are his most recent videos before the one I'm responding to. He's done great videos about battery life and electric vehicles. One of the videos here is about being aware of bad products, another two are about watching out for bad advertising, and some are about what's good or bad for your vehicle. He does a lot of ads but also produces very informative videos. You might notice one of the videos I'm recommending here is also sponsored very prominently by Mobile One, because it's a good video despite being an ad. Again, my point is not that the channel is bad, it's just that the most recent video is misleading about hybrids. Reminder that these videos are linked to in the description. Have a lovely day.